Hello there. Let's finish this. Finish it. All right. We have Fast Times at Richmond High, which is appropriate for the final film in this series. Um, I love this movie. All right. I rented this from the library when I was, I wasn't in high school. I was still with my mom though. I, I had already graduated, but I, I ran from, from the library when I was uh, 19, 20, 20, 21 ish before I moved out here. So about 20. Imagine watching this movie. <laughs> And your mom's in the house. And you get that, you get, there's a couple scenes in this movie that you don't want, don't want your mom to see. But, uh, you know, I wasn't sharing the room with my brother anymore and I was an adult. So, there you go. Uh, and yes, we are back in the regular kitchen area because they are not working any other right now. It's 5.30 when I'm, central time when I'm recording this, so. And, uh, so let's talk about this. This movie, it's not really a plot, so to speak. Like, it's just what teenagers in 1982 do over the course of half a year, like the school year, really. Like the first one starts in November, I think it starts in November, goes through Christmas, and it ends at the end of the school year. So it's kind of like that. It's like a school year movie uh the number of stars in this film let's see i'll read off the box first and i brought you some of the other ones sean penn jennifer jason lee judge reinhold phoebe kate phoebe cates brian backer robert romanis ray walston also including anthony edwards eric stoltz amanda wiss yes she's also in this um What's his name? Uh, Vincent Schiavelli. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of young stars in this. And Nicolas Cage, who I did not know was in this. There's a there's a scene where they're at the, the, the local burger joint. And you see Nicolas Cage in the back. And I went, Nicolas Cage! <laughs> I did not know he was in this. He's like five seconds. He's in this. He, Oh, he's blonde, he's young, and he's just like, wow. I did not know he was in this movie. So, yeah, so I guess I'll talk about, there's a couple of different plot lines. We'll talk about Brad first. Brad is the older brother to Stacy. He works at this fast food burger joint that I mentioned. And one day, a customer is extremely rude to him, and he fires back insults with explanation you know, obscenities, and he gets fired for it. Which, I feel like he should explain that he was trying to get the, the voucher or whatever it was, and the guy would not stop yelling at him. I've been in situations before, maybe not on a job, but where people will just won't leave you alone, and you flip out on them. When someone won't leave you alone, eventually that's going to boil over, and you're going to go off on them. It's not entirely Brad's fault. There is some, you know, to it, but it's not entirely his fault. But he just gets fired right away. He has to work for this fish joint, which he ends up quitting anyway. He has to wear this goofy-ass hat. But uh, then his girlfriend, played by Amanda Wiss, breaks up with him. No, oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Guy works at a burger joint. Girlfriend breaks up with him, played by Amanda Wiss, who also plays in this movie. It, it, and he works at a fast food joint, and he gets fired. And, uh, I think he gets fired. So, yeah, there's similarities there. But then Brad, he, uh, he starts working for this fish joint, like a discount Lawn John Silvers. And then he's driving one day, uh, delivering something like, he has to deliver, I don't know what it is. I think it's food, but he goes to take his uniform off. I know you have to wear that. And I'm like, 
I would say, okay, I'll wear the uniform, but I'm not wearing the hat. You're not making me wear the hat. I'll wear the other uniforms. I'm not wearing the hat. You're not going to force me to wear this stupid ass hat. Okay? I'll do deliveries. I'm not wearing this. Get a regular hat with the, with the X on it, you know? Something like this. Give me a hat like this. Put the skull and crossbones on it. I'll wear it backwards when I deliver your food. All right? That's what you'll get from me. All right. I, I can't drive, but you know what I mean. And then we see he's working at a fast food mini mart. Not a fast food. A gas station type thing. Uh, at the end, where Spicoli walks in. Uh, we get to him later. And then he gets robbed. By my, my, not by Spicoli, but by someone else. And he like throws hot coffee at the guy and subdues the guy with his own gun. So, you know, he, became, he ends up becoming manager. That's where the film ends there. But, yeah. Spicoli. Played... By, by the way, Brad is played by Judge Reinhold, if I didn't say it. Spicoli played by Sean Penn. He's dear, typical, laid-back, loser, not loser, loose, stoner-type character who is always brushing with the local history teacher. History teacher? History teacher. Mr. Hand, played by Ray Walston. And he's the, the funny character you're supposed to follow in this, really. Uh... And, uh, yeah, uh, so, he's a slacker. Slacker. I know your father, and he want to hear you, slacker, too. Uh, but, uh, and he shows up late for class, and he and Mr. Hand, they get into it all the time. Uh, and Mr. Hand comes off as one of those strict teacher types. But by the end, you realize that he, that this, this is a commentary on teachers and how they're, they're always, you know, thought of as hard asses and strict and that they don't care. They just want, they just get mad at you and yell at you because you're late and everything. But they do care. And you see the bond towards the end of the film where it's like, you know, he, he teaching them and everything. And they have this little jams, little, you know. Jam session that they do, and you know, so Coley actually gets something sort of right. And he was there's there's picture, they shake hands. You know, there's not much to say with Spicoli, you kind of just follow him every once in a while. But the, there is the kind of a storyline between Mr. Hand, and that was kind of cool. Um, Mr. Vargas, we'll talk about him. He's played by Vincent Schiavelli, he teaches the science class. And the only thing the merit is that he actually takes these his students to a hospital and shows them a corpse taking the heart out. I, what school would allow this? I, I'm just saying. All right, the main story beat. The main story beat consists of four characters in total. Stacy, Linda, Ratner, and Damone. All right, so Stacy is 15 years old. She's a sophomore. Which I was 15 when I was a freshman because I was held back. But she's 15 years old. She's a sophomore. But she meets this guy who's 26 years old. Almost 10 years older than she is. And he, she gets, he gives her, gives him, she gives him her number. And they end up hooking up in one of the first scenes in which every time I hear the song, uh, Somebody's Baby by Jackson Brown, I think of this scene where they go to The Point, which is just an old baseball field, and they have sex. Keep in mind that that is, this is wholly illegal because she's 15 and he's 26, and then she he gives her flowers and then blows her off. But that, that... Now... Jennifer Jason Lee was like 19, 20 when she did this movie, so that's, you know, that's okay. But watching that scene back, because I didn't realize it before when she said, like, it's like the next day or whatever, or maybe it's that same day, but it's like, uh, you're 15 years old, and I'm like, she's supposed to be 15. 15! She said she was 26. Mallrats. 
But like, I don't know. It's really weird when he opens her shirt and it's like, she's supposed to be 15. But I like tits. And I know she's not actually 15, but it's, it's weird. You know? Uh, but the later with Phoebe Cates, when we see her scene... She's actually supposed to be, like, about 18. Anyway, and it's a fantasy, by the way. She's older and she graduates, so, yeah. And I'm assuming that Damone and Ratner are supposed to be about the same age as Stacy, maybe like a year older, 15, 16. So that's not a problem, because they don't graduate. Um, here, here, here's one problem. We never see parents in this film. There's no parents. There's adults. There's teachers. There's no parents. Like, there's a scene where Stacy calls Damone. And we just hear her, you know, where is he? He's, he? Oh, he's helping his father. We never see the pic. You know, we never, we never see the parents anywhere. So we got Ratner. He has a crush on Stacy because he works at the uh, movie theater across from the food court pizza place that she works at at the mall. Malls. I miss malls. I mean, there are still malls, but not where I live. We got nothing over here. No malls. We got a Walmart. That's it. Walmart and High V, but there's none. They still have some movies here, but not nothing in them. But uh, no mall. So Damone tries to teach Ratner how to get girls and stuff, right? So they show up at Stacy's house one day, and they go in the pool and they're playing around. By the way. I should mention, the writer did talk to her and did kind of go out on a date before this. But, um, they're in the pool and stuff and Brad comes home and this is where we get the scene. He's in the bathroom jerking off to a fantasy of Linda, Phoebe Cates, walking up to him. It's the scene that ruined a thousand VH, a million VH, a thousand VHS tapes. She opens it up, and you see it, and it's... She's a gorgeous woman, okay? I'll just say it. Phoebe Cates was one gorgeous woman. Uh, but, uh... It is, too, still, I guess. I haven't seen her lately, but... I think she retired from acting. But, yeah. And then we get, later, Damone... Uh, gives her a ride home because um, Stacy, uh, all of a sudden, she decides she has a crush on Damone, even though she knows Ratner wants to date her. But she has a thing for Damone. And what I like about this is that it's not like Damone's an asshole and doesn't care that he does this. He does care because when she comes up to him, the first thing he does is start talking to her about Ratner. And she's like, oh, he's nice, but I like you. And even, like, when she asks to get a ride home, he's a little nervous about it. And he does, like, have sex with her. But later there's that exchange when she tells him that he's pre she's pregnant. Yeah, you're pregnant. She tells, him, she tells him that she's pregnant. And he's like, hey, you come out of me. And she's like, no. Don't, don't even say that. I'm like, but you did. He, he kind of didn't want to be there. You, you're the one that came on to him. You're the one that set it up. You know, you're. She's the one that even says, "Are you take off your clothes?" And he's like, "You first. Let's do it together." So yeah. And by the way, ladies, he's a fast one. He's like very quick. It's like. And he's done. He's like very. He, he ain't satisfying no woman. But yeah, and I do think it's unrealistic because Ratner finds out and they get he gets pissed. But like, they end up being friends anyway. But he had sex with her. I don't think he's ever told that he knocked her up though. I don't think he ever said anything to him about that. So that's that's another thing that might come up at an eventual point. But. Yeah, and so she gets an abort abortion. And this is another thing. Like, Brad, her older brother, is a good big older brother because he drops her off the way he believes she's going to the, the bowling alley. But he sees her go across the street to the abortion clinic, which 
does an abortion happen that happen that quick? I feel like it's really quick, and he's he stayed outside the whole time. I don't know, but he's there to pick her up, and she's like, "Don't tell mom and dad." I'm like, "Well, how could we? They don't fucking exist." I think wait, wait a minute. I think we see her mom in like one scene when he, she tucks her in. I think that's it. I just remember that there's one scene in the house before she takes off to meet that uh, 26 year old. Which, by the way, her room, the window to her room, is in the front of her house. Ha no. What? <laughs> the the front window of a house would be the living room. Not her bedroom. What what house is made like that? I don't... I mean... My mom's bedroom was the front window to our house. But it wasn't a bedroom. She made it a bedroom. Because she had the room upstairs. And then we needed to spread out the three of us kids. Because my brother was getting older. So... He got my sister's room. My mom got my my sister got my mom's room, and my mom moved downstairs to what used to be a somewhat living room. But that became her bedroom, and then the living room, the middle room, we had a whole Victorian house, became the living room. But she she converted that. It wasn't a bedroom, so they could have done it with hers, I guess. But in 1982, I don't know, I don't know. So yeah, and. uh so she gets the abortion, which, I don't know. Uh, it, it, yeah, it happens, you know, when, uh, when me and my ex found out she was pregnant, uh, it was asked, you know, what do we want to do? Do we want to have an abortion? I, I said, no, I said, I'm not going to do that to my child. You know, now I have a 10 year old son and I feel old cause I can't believe, I look at him and I said, I can't believe you're 10. And he's like, I know, you keep saying that, shut up. <laughs> just, I can't believe he's 10 years old. I feel like I just hold him in my arms for the first time, and now he's 10. But yeah, as a father, the abortion thing doesn't sit with me. But I'm not holding that against this film. This film is fantastic. It's raunchy, it's crazy, but it's got heart. All the characters are fantastic and fantastically acted, by the way. Because you got future Oscar winner, Sean Penn. You got future... Eddie Murphy co-star Judge Reinhold. You got future psycho crazy man Nicolas Cage, who had he has no lines. Uh, you got future hater of Christmas, Phoebe Cates. Uh, yeah, this movie is fantastic. And and just to feel the soundtrack, the beginning of this film is so eighties. It we followed Demone to the tune of. We got the beat by the Go-Go's, I think it is. As he walks into the mall and we get the opening titles. And, and it's really cool how they do that. And they, you know, you got music. You got, we got the beat, Somebody's Baby, um, Bon, I meant, I was talking about the race soundtrack before, but the soundtrack on this is even better, man. And look at this. This is a, I love the 80s. No, this is the, 100th anniversary edition of the DVD, right? You can open this up, and it shows you what films came out. Like, look, you see, you know, pictures and stuff, and it shows you the films that came out or in, a, in a span. You got Smokey and the Bandit in 1977, National Lampoon's Animal House in 1978, Deer Hunter in 1978, The Jerk in 1979, Coal Miner's Daughter in 1980, The Blues Brothers in 1980, uh, on Golden Pond in 1991. E.T. the Extraterrestrial in 1982. This movie also in 1982. Sophie's Choice and also in 1982. Monty Python's The Meaning of Life in 1983. And Scarface, Salute to My Little Friend in 1983. All legendary movies. It's big movies, you know. I think some of these won. I think Deer Hunter, On Golden Pond. I don't know if Deer Hunter won an award. In Scarface, maybe. But, uh, something. Uh, but yeah. If you don't know, if you haven't figured it out by now, Fast Time for my High is going to the moon, baby. Because it is a fantastic film. And I love this movie from the first time I watched it. And all I can say is, hey, bud, let's party. What are your thoughts? 
on fence fast time is my high I'm gonna comment below make sure to like share and subscribe the next video I'm doing will be the ranking for these 10 films so look for that but thank you for watching I've been Scotty I'll see you in the next one uh, uh. Matt